Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Lydia and this is Time with Lydia, the pharmacist. A big thank you to all those who have subscribed to this channel. This is a channel where we educate ourselves on common clinical conditions. So if you're new to this channel and you want to learn more about your health, then please hit on that subscribe button and also on the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I upload. Today, I'm going to be spending some time with you talking about a very interesting topic called menopause. Menopause is when a woman stops having periods and is not able to get pregnant naturally. It starts by your period becoming less frequent for months, sometimes years before it stops completely. It is a natural process that occurs with aging and occurs in women of age 45 to 55 years. The question now is what causes menopause? The ovaries form part of the female reproductive system. They are responsible for two things. One, they produce and release eggs for fertilization. And two, they produce two types of hormones, estrogen and progesterone. As part of the natural process of growing up, the ovaries at some point stop functioning, so no eggs are released and no hormones are produced. This is when menopause occurs. A woman will reach menopause when they have not had a period for at least one year. Menopause can occur in various ways. There's what we call premature menopause. This occurs at any age at all and there is no clear cause, but sometimes it can be caused by chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or a surgery carried out to remove the ovaries. There's also what we call early menopause. This occurs in women between the ages of 40 and 45 years. There are lots of symptoms that come with menopause. The severity and duration can vary from woman to woman. And these symptoms can start a few months or years before menopause and can continue sometime afterwards. Averagely, symptoms can last for about four years after the last period. And in a few women, it can last for 12 years. Symptoms can be quite severe and can affect the day-to-day -day activities of the woman. One of the first symptoms that a woman would experience is a change in period patterns and frequency. This can occur as a light or heavy period occurring every two to three weeks or not having periods at all for months and then the period will eventually stop. You can still get pregnant during the transition. So if you don't want to have any more children, then use a contraception that is appropriate for you. Amongst the symptoms is hot flashes. This is a sudden feeling of heat on the face and neck associated with sweating. This can occur occasionally or can occur frequently. And there are some things that can trigger hot flashes. This includes alcohol, spicy food, high temperature, smoking, wearing thick clothes, stress, and anxiety. Sometimes certain medications can trigger a hot flash. Night sweats is a common symptom. And this is as a result of hot flashes occurring during the night. This brings about a difficulty in sleeping. There's also headaches and concentration and memory problems. Mood changes can also occur. Vaginal dryness is also very common. And this is characterized by soreness and itchiness around the vaginal area. There's also a discomfort during sexual intercourse. There is also a decrease in sex drive. There is also a decrease in muscle mass and there can be joint stiffness as well. You can get recurrent urinary tract infection and all these are as a result of a decrease or no estrogen at all in the body. There can also be an increase in the risk of developing weakness in your bones. There are things that you can do to help with the symptoms. 
let's talk about what you can do to help with hot flashes and night sweats. You can wear light clothes and keep your room cool by using the electric fan. Also, instead of taking a hot shower or a hot bath, you can take a lukewarm shower or a bath. Avoid taking alcohol and avoid taking caffeine containing drinks. Also, you can sip cold or iced drinks to keep your body cool. There is also hormone replacement therapy that you can get from your doctor. These come in the form of tablets, patches, implants, and what these medications do is they tend to release oestrogen into the body. So then all these symptoms do not occur. To manage vaginal dryness, you can buy vaginal moisturizers from the pharmacy. There's also lubricants that you can buy. Also, the doctor can prescribe oestrogen creams, and these are very good in the management of vaginal dryness. And to help maintain your concentration and keep your memory sharp, try to read books as much as you can. Don't isolate yourself. Socialize regularly and get yourself organized so you don't get overwhelmed with so many things around you. And to help prevent the loss of muscle mass and breaking of bones, try as much as possible to eat healthy meals. Eat meals rich in calcium and vitamin D. Fish, broccoli, yogurt, and low-fat milk are a very good source of these vitamins. If you think your meals are not giving you enough of these, then you can take vitamin D and calcium supplements. Also exercise regularly, at least 30 minutes exercise three times a week would be very good. If your sex drive is affecting your relationship, then seek medical help. Also, if you suffer from low mood and anxiety and you think it's getting worse, then there's a need to make an appointment with your doctor and have a word with them. There are various things that can be done for you. And sometimes these things are non-medicinal. There's what we call cognitive behavioral therapy. This is a therapy that involves talking and your doctor can refer you to someone who is specialized in that area. As you talk, you feel good about yourself and your morale is boosted. Don't stay and suffer in silence. There's help out there for every single condition. Some people also go for natural remedies. These preparations help a lot of people. They are good, but make sure that before you use them, you speak to somebody who is specialized in that area. There can be interactions between these natural remedies and some medication that you are maybe taking already. So there's a need to make sure that whatever you are taking is good for you. I want to point out here that if you have to go for a review appointment, make sure you do. Because at this appointment, the doctor is going to have a look at the medication that you are taking and assess whether it's helping with your symptoms or not. They would also find out whether there's a need to continue this medication and whether you are suffering any side effects at all. Also, your blood pressure would be checked and your weight would also be checked. So don't miss these appointments. It's very essential. Sometimes also, they would want to find out whether there's a need to stop the medication. And even if it has to be stopped, how can that be done? It is very essential that you fulfill these appointments. I hope you have learned something new today. If you have, then please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave your comments, your questions and your suggestions in the comments section. Remember also to share with family and friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure having a chat with you and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.